Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard Destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos. What have I done? I... I didn't want... It was like a dream. Quick. I... I've, I've, 
gotta get out of here, but before somebody comes in here. knife. I've got to get rid of it. Duh. It's barred up. I can't get out this way. Do something for you, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought that you were somebody else. Don't worry about it. Diner. That's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. 
But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. In five years on the force, I've seen some murders. But you never really get used to death. You just learn to live with it, that's all. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else. But I clearly remember the bad feeling I got when I walked into that restaurant. As if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different. How's it going, McCarthy? Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. I found the body in the toilets. I had to go before I went home. Did anybody notice anything strange? No, nobody saw anything. Do we have a suspect? A client left just before I found the body. To top it all, he left without paying. Kate tried to talk to him, then he left. Who is the victim? His name was, uh, John Winston. A regular here at the restaurant. Kate knew him. She could tell you more. What were you doing here? Were you on duty? I wasn't. I just happened to be here when the murder happened. I like to come by here after work. Kate's coffee is the best in the East End. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah, Kate Morrison. I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I wanna make sure she gets home okay. <laughs> My partner's gonna take your statement soon, ma'am. It shouldn't take too long. Thanks. You look hammered, Tyler. Yeah, this is my third night on call in a row. You know me, man. If I don't get my beauty sleep, it's zombie city. Ah, uh, you should be out of here pretty soon now. <laughs> you don't know Carla. She's capable of keeping everybody up till breakfast. And she is by far the most stubborn girl I ever met. Pretty funny seeing you on the job at this hour, Tyler. What, you fall out of bed? Yeah, don't make me laugh, Garrett. My lips are chapped. Do we know anything about the victim? His name was John Winston. He worked at a little store in the neighborhood. He lived alone in a small apartment. According to Kay, he was just a guy. Bizarre. What? 
Well, he still has his credit card and a hundred bucks in cash on it. I guess the killer wasn't after his money. Hey, I think there's some blood in the sink. Maybe the killer washed up before he left. Yeah, could be. Do you know if anyone has contacted the family? Not as far as I know. Oh, right. I get it. I'll take care of you. Several wounds on the left side of the chest, in the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. Blood on the mop. The killer must have used it to clean up the mess. Why would he risk getting caught to do that? No trace of a struggle. Looks like the guy was taken totally by surprise. Why is there blood here? Did you find anything? Possibly. I don't understand why there would be blood here. Maybe it belongs to the victim. Not likely. Get Garrett to analyze it. Then we'll know for sure. Tyler's been my partner for almost a year. He grew up with the gangs in the Bronx before he decided to join the force. Sometimes he's unpredictable, but he's a good guy. Did you find anything, Tyler? For that, I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. Keep up the good work, Tyler. Hey, Garrett. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Hey, Carla. Hey, Carla. So, you guys find anything? We took some samples here and there. We're almost finished. We were just waiting for you before we took the body away. Kate? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. I'm in charge of the investigation here. Would you mind answering a few questions? No. Go ahead. Did you know the victim well? John was a regular. He came every Monday. He always ordered the same thing and I left a nice tip. Can you tell me anything about the customer who left just before they discovered the body? He was just a normal guy. I, I didn't really pay any attention to him. What was the man doing before the murder happened? He was there for a while. He was reading, I think. What was he like, Kate? Do you think you could describe him for me? I only saw him for a few seconds. I guess he was about average height, fairly young. That's all I can remember. Did you get the impression that John and the suspect knew each other? No. I don't think they did know each other. The man had already been here a while when John came in. They didn't talk to each other. No, I'm, I'm almost certain that John didn't know him. Was John here alone? Did he speak with anyone? 
John always came alone. We chatted a bit, the weather, his job, the usual stuff. He never talked to anybody else. What happened before the murder? Did you notice anything unusual? No. It was just a night like any other. Can you tell me what you saw? There weren't that many people tonight. It's usually pretty calm during the week. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my god. You have to try to be strong, Kate. I know that this has been a shock for you, but you're the only one who can help us find the suspect. My shift was almost over. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. John got up and went to the restroom. The man must have followed him. When he came back out, I noticed that he hadn't paid his bill. I'm careful, because that happens a lot here, people forgetting to pay their bill. What happened next? The guy just ran off without paying. It wasn't until Martin found John's body that I realized... Did you happen to notice anything strange about the suspect's behavior before he went into the restroom? No. You wait. Yes. I remember something. I came back at one point just to check whether he needed anything. He didn't answer me. He just stared straight ahead. It was weird. I didn't push it. I thought maybe this guy is a little crazy. God. If I had only known. Do you think that you would recognize the suspect? I'll never forget that face. Perfect. Do you think that you could come down to the station tomorrow and help us construct a likeness of the killer? Yeah. I'll do whatever you think I can to help catch him. Thank you very much for your help, Kate. I hope you find the bastard who did it. People like that just don't deserve to live. I promise you, we'll do everything in our power to find him. Go home now and try to get some sleep. Martin will make sure you get home okay. Good night. Let's go, Carla. I can't even keep my eyes open anymore. I want to take another look around. We haven't found the murder weapon. It might still be around here somewhere. You ever consider a career in plumbing, Carla? You ever consider a career in comedy, Tyler? Hey, everybody says I'm a very funny guy. Stab some dude in the toilet? You gotta be crazy. This guy took a big risk. Anybody could have walked in here and surprised him. Maybe it was a revenge thing, or a psycho. This town is full of psychos, they're everywhere. 
When I was in the Bronx, I saw guys who'd rip your guts out and hand them to you just so they could take your shoes. Tyler, can you shut up for two minutes? Unless there's a gang running around hiding bloody knives and toilets, I think I might have found the murder weapon. Great. Tell Garrett, have him check for prints on the handle. Okay. Ready to fall back asleep? Tyler? What time is it? Oh, hell. When are you coming back? I won't be long, baby. Go back to sleep. I'll be there when you wake up. Catch you later. Hey, Garrett. Carla wants you to verify two or three things. Don't worry, I wrote it all down on this paper so you wouldn't forget. I had a feeling that Carla was gonna keep us up a little longer. Carla, she's really something else. She's not always easy to get along with, but She's the best damn cop I know. You ready to go, Tyler? I think I've seen everything I need to see. Are you sure? We can take another look around if you want. No, nope, we're good. Let's head home. Okay, let's bust. Cool. Carla agrees to go. Let's get into the car before she changes her mind. Shut that thing off. We're on a murder site here. Hey, I just thought I'd chill the atmosphere a little. Okay, it's off. I better turn this off before Carla pops a vein. Wounded. 
taxi. The murderer might have come or gone in a taxi. I'm gonna check on the destinations of taxis leaving this area. That should help my migraine. Notice reads, don't take with alcohol. Thus spoke Zarathustra by Nietzsche. I've read it so many times I know half of it by heart. The sheets are full of blood. I can't go back to bed. I'm not tired anyway. This will hide the blood, in case anyone comes in the room. I'll change the sheets later. My parents, Marcus and me, before the accident. Wrists are still bloody. Gotta do something about that. Hello? Lucas, it's good 
to hear from you. I thought I'd call to find out if maybe you wanted to go to Mom and Dad's tomb together. And to be honest, I thought it might be a good excuse to get back in touch with you. I need to see you, Marcus. I'm in big trouble. What are you talking about, Lucas? What happened? I can't really talk about it on the telephone. It's serious, Marcus. I'll meet you in half an hour at the park. See you there. New York Police, please open the door. Hey, what's that? Stay where you are and put your hands in the air. These images in my head, I must be losing my mind. The keys to my apartment. I'll grab him when I'm ready to leave. The clothes that I was wearing last night, they're covered in blood. I better not leave them there.
massacre in East End restaurant. An especially horrible murder was committed last night in the restroom of a local restaurant. The killer is a man in his 30s of average height with brown hair. Police are already searching for the man and will be releasing a composite sketch in the next few days. New York police, please open the door. The police, they know, they've come to arrest me. Police, open up. Just a minute, I'm coming. I can't let them find any evidence linking me to last night. I've got a couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. Sir, this is the New York police. I must insist that you open this door immediately. I'm sorry to make you wait like that. I, I was in the shower. Are you Lucas Kane? Yes. Mr. Kane, the neighbors heard yelling from your apartment. Is there a problem? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I cut myself on some broken glass and I freaked out a little. Fortunately, it wasn't a really big deal. Would it be all right if I took a little look around your apartment? Whatever. Go ahead. What happened to your wrist, sir? I told you, I had a stupid accident with some broken glass. Holy cow. When you cut yourself, you go all the way, don't you? Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, sorry to have bothered you, sir. You know how it is. With everything that's been going on, uh, we prefer to be careful. I understand. Long, Mr. Kane. When Marcus and I were kids, we were inseparable. He's the one who took care of me after our parents died. We kind of grew apart after he became a priest. But he's still the only person I really trust. The only one who might believe that I had nothing to do with all this mess.
happy to see you. I missed you. It's been a while. Two years. So tell me what's happened, Lucas. I've killed a man, Marcus. It happened at a restaurant last night. It's like I was possessed, in a sort of trance, like I was a puppet on a string. I saw what I was doing, but I was powerless to stop it. My God. I can't believe this, Lucas. Tell me that it wasn't you. You're not capable of something like that. And there's this, too. You cut your wrists? Before the murder, I, I carved these symbols on my arms with a knife. I don't know if they mean anything. This... murder? I exactly how did it happen? Well, after work last night, I stopped at a little diner to get something to eat. I read a book at my table, I think. And after, it's just a black hole. I don't remember anything. Right up until I found myself in the toilets with a knife in my hand. And it, was, it was horrible. Were there any witnesses? Did anyone see you? Probably. I got out of the restaurant as best I could. The police still haven't identified me, apparently, but it probably won't take them too long to track me down. You say that you were in a sort of a trance. What do you mean by that? Are you talking about magic? Or sorcery? Or something like that? Marcus, I don't have an explanation. I'm just telling you what happened, that's all. I'm only certain about one thing. I'm not the one who really killed that man. While I was doing this horrible thing, I saw something, or, or rather someone. Was somebody else there with you? No, it was, it was like a sort of vision. I saw a man in the middle of hundreds of candles, and, and there was this little girl. You saw a little girl? She seemed alone, lost. She, she asked me to help her. What happened to me, Marcus? What am I supposed to do now? You know me better than anyone, Marcus. Help me. Listen, Lucas, I... I'm a bit lost here. This whole story is just so bizarre. It might be better. Maybe you should go and tell your story to the police, Lucas. Turn yourself in before they find you. Do you really think the police are going to believe a story like that? They'll throw me in prison for the rest of my life, and I'll never find out what really happened. I am a priest, Lucas. The fact that you have taken a life is a very serious matter. I told you that it wasn't me, Marcus. All these years and nothing's changed. You still never listen to me. Lucas, don't ask me to make a choice between my faith and my brother. I'm not a murderer, Marcus. You're the only person I can trust. I'm just asking you to believe me. Very well. I'll do whatever I can for you, but I can't do anything that goes against my beliefs. Look, I, I need to get some answers. I'll, I'll call you. Here. You need this more than I do. Marcus, you know that I don't believe in all that. Thanks.
longer beating. Quick, maybe it's not too late. One, two, th one, two, three. 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 Control 324, kid just fell into the water. Send an ambulance right away. Man, what courage. The kid would have died. That guy's a hero. He dove into freezing water to save the kid. The kid never would have made it out of there without him. The cop recognized me. We both knew it. It's hard to say why he didn't turn me in. Maybe he decided I was even. I had taken a life and given one back. Nothing really changed for me. I was still wanted for murder by the police. But when I left that park, I knew I could look myself in the mirror again without cringing. I've got this really bad habit for a cop. Once I start working on a case, I can't think about anything else. I'm exhausted. I haven't gotten a wink of sleep all night. Something's bothering me about this murder, but... I just can't seem to put my finger on what it is. Hi, Carla. How you doing today? Hi, Doug. Not too bad. Is Tyler here yet? No, not that I know of. So, ready for that big retirement? Eh, working on it. <laughs> Hey, Carla, can you tell your partner to pay me back that hundred bucks he owes me? I've been waiting six months for it now. Can't help you there, Jeffrey. Talk to him about it. He's been avoiding me like the plague. Plus, you know, you're the only one he listens to. Catch you later, Jeffrey. Tyler is still not here. I'd better try to give him a ring. Hi, Carla. How are you? Hi, Carla. Hi, Carla. Hi, Garrett. Oh, wait, Carla. I got some results back on the tests we did for that restaurant murder. Great. As soon as Tyler gets here, we'll come and see you. Okay. I'll be at my desk all morning. Yeah. Know what time it is? Oh, shit. 
Get a move on. The waitress is coming this morning to flesh out the composite on the killer. I'm on my way. associated with a case. Too bad. I would have liked to find out more. Stay a little longer. Mmm, sorry babe, but I really gotta go. I'll make some coffee. Okay, I'll grab a shower, get dressed, and then I'm out of here. Good-looking guy, you know that? Sam looks like she's sulking, and I know what's bothering her.
Go back to bed, Sam. You're gonna catch a death of cold like that. I'm not cold. Oh, look, Sam, please don't start. I got no intention of dying today. I'm sick of living in fear like this. Every morning I'm, I'm terrified that something's gonna happen to you. I know how you feel, Sam. There's a lot of violence out there. But if nobody does anything, it's all gonna go to shit. We're gonna have kids someday. I want to leave them a world that's a little better than the one we got now. But why does it have to be you who's out there risking his life, Tyler? Why couldn't we just go to Florida and work with my family and live a normal life like everybody else? But why do I have to wonder if you're gonna die every day? I'm just not made for that kind of life, Sam. I've been around too much violence all my life to go live some kind of normal life like that. I know you love me, babe. So try to understand me, too. Aren't you going to kiss me? I love you, Tyler. looking for you. Yeah, I know. So, you ready for retirement, man? Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. guy I was looking for. Oh, shit. You remember that hundred bucks I loaned you about six months ago? I'd really like for you to get that back to me as soon as possible. Like maybe now, for example? Jeffrey, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I got no more money. I gave it all to charity in an effort to make the world a better place for you and for me. That's real funny. Now give me my hundred bucks before I get really pissed. Yo, let me make you a deal. I'll play you a game of b-ball for your hundred bucks. If you win, I'll give you two hundred bucks right then. But if you lose, we cool. You'll give me two hundred bucks if I win. You got my word, man. All right, you're on. But don't even think about not paying me if you lose, because that... Don't worry, Jeffrey. I'll come by and see you when I get five minutes. The waitress hasn't come in yet? She won't be long. Garrett got the lab results. Shall we go? All right, let me hang up my coat. I'll be right with you. Okay. See you in a minute.
So, what do you want to start with? What did you find on the knife? Got some good prints off it. They matched those found on the fork and glass at the suspect's table. So, the murderer was definitely at that table. Anything on the blade? I'm getting to that. We definitely had blood from the victim, but the weird thing is we also found blood from the killer. What about the pool of blood in the stall? You're not going to believe this. The blood wasn't from the victim, it was from the killer. What was he doing bleeding in the stall? I have absolutely no idea. Frank found a book on one of the tables in the diner. It was Shakespeare. Uh, the Tempest, I think. Did you check for prints? Yep. And they matched the ones on the fork and the glass. So it was definitely his book. It looked like a fairly old book. Maybe we can get some more stuff out of it. So, what do you think about all that? I don't have any explanation for the blood in the stall. The victim could have wounded the killer during a struggle, but it doesn't make sense that it would be in the stall. It's as though the killer wounded himself. Hey, why not? You get clumsy fools in every other profession. Why not killers? That's kind of a flimsy explanation, Garrett. Well, to each his own, Carla. I do the testing, you figure out the reason why. Thanks for your help, Garrett. See you later. So, what do we do now? You go take care of the composite. I'm gonna go check with the coroner and see if he got anything from the body. Okay. Catch you later. seemed to be fighting against something, but I still didn't know what. Just live my life no matter what. Don't raise any suspicions. Despite the state I was in, I decided to go to work as though nothing had happened. I'm in charge of computer maintenance in the Naser and Jones Bank. I share my office with Warren. Do you know what time it is? What's wrong with you? I had a little problem on the way back in. I had to go back home and change my clothes. Tiffany and I. About two years ago, I guess. I haven't been able to throw it away yet. Lucas? 
You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Lucas Kane. Hello, Lucas. Oh, hello, Tiffany. I left a message on your machine last night. Um, I'd like to come and pick up some stuff at your place. Could I come over tonight? I should be back home around 8 o'clock tonight. Okay, it won't take too long. Are you doing okay, Lucas? I gotta let you go. I'm doing a thing here. Bye. Look out, the cup! Lucas? Is there a problem? No, I, I, I just thought... It seemed so real. I saw that coffee cup fall. Hello? Yes, sir. We'll get on that right away. Station 62 is down. I'll go. No, forget it. I'll, I'll handle it. Whatever you say. It happened. Just like I'd seen it. Like the cop in the apartment. Is it possible that I can really see things before they happen?
Lucas. Lucas, what happened? Ah! Did you hear me? Are you all right? Hey, you've hurt yourself. You're bleeding. I, uh, I gotta go. I didn't have the slightest idea what had happened. The one thing I do know, those things almost killed me. Come in. H hello, Detective. Hello, Mrs. Morrison. Uh, thanks for taking the trouble to come down. Uh, please, take a seat. Now, we're gonna try and assemble a composite photo of the suspect you saw. We have a computer program to help us. You'll see, it's really simple. It's kinda like a video game. Have you ever played a video game, Mrs. Morrison? No. Ah, it doesn't matter. You're gonna do fine. The most important thing is to try to remember exactly what happened. The program consists of several types of facial features. You scroll through them until it looks like the man you saw. You understand? Yes. Well, I think I do. Okay. Let's go. Now, is this the face of the person you saw? Yes. At least, th that's how I remember him. Thank you very much for your help. We're gonna get this picture out to all the airports, trains, and bus stations, and to all of our patrolmen. If this guy is still in New York, we're gonna find him. And go buy yourself a video game. Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, if you prefer, you can wait outside. I'd rather stay here if you don't mind. I've studied some medicine. I've seen dead bodies. Oh. As you wish. No apparent hematoma on the body. Two broken fingernails on the right hand. I didn't see the murder until the last moment. He didn't have time to struggle. Large hematoma on the back of the cranium. A uh, mm, fracture of the occipital bone. He cracked his head when he fell. Abnormal dilation in um, both pupils. Why are his pupils dilated? What did he see before he died? Three knife wounds between the third and fifth ribs in the proximity of the heart. And the blade was driven in deep there. And the stabs seem to have been delivered from the front and moved from left to right. The murderer was left-handed. 
One stab, neatly cut the aorta. And the other two cut the left and right coronary arteries. And he really didn't have a chance. The blade slipped right through the ribs to cut the arteries. Do you think the killer had some knowledge of anatomy? Yeah, it's not impossible, but I doubt that someone who understood human anatomy would do this. You really have to be deranged to want to provoke a slow and agonizing death on this map. It was definitely the knife wounds that caused his death? Yes. Yeah, the three arteries leading to the heart were cut. Uh, the heart was literally uh, disconnected from the rest of the body. I uh, saw a case like this once before. It was a while back now, in the 90s, I think. Exactly the same. Three stabs around the heart, each one cutting a main artery. It really struck me at the time. I wondered how such a thing were possible. It was the, um, what was that name again? Karsten or Kirsten, something like that. Kirsten? Yes, that's it, Kirsten. You know about that case? Not yet. I'm sure as hell gonna find out. directly into the frozen water at Central Park today to save a child who had tumbled in by accident. The young boy was successfully resuscitated and will completely recover. His courageous rescuer disappeared before the ambulance had even arrived, apparently a case of a reluctant hero. The investigation continues into the recent murder which took place at Doc's Diner. Police have today provided a composite photo of the suspect based on information given by a witness to the crime. If you see this man, please call the special number which appears on your screen now. And finally, a report on the weather with a new snow front moving down from Canada. They know what I look like. Well, that's it then. Now the manhunt really begins. You have no new messages.
I gotta turn the amp on first. stuff. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, I'm just a little bit sleepy. Come in. Have a seat. Want something to drink? I think there's still a bottle of gin laying around in the kitchen somewhere, if you want. Yeah, I'd love some.
So, how's life? I'm pretty swamped with work at the hospital right now, and I'm not completely moved in yet, but I'm doing fine. I'll go and get your stuff. It's just two boxes. I'm not sure exactly where they'd be now, but they shouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, they've got my initials on them. Here they are. I think that's everything. Is everything okay, Lucas? You look stressed. I... I've got some big problems right now. I can't really talk about it, but it's fairly serious stuff. If there's anything that I can do for you, Lucas... Man, I wish there was, but no. Thanks for offering. Hey, I, I miss you, you know? I miss you too. I'm still not ready, Lucas. I need some more time to be alone. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have... I'm gonna go. Thanks for everything. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to. Maybe it was better this way. After all, I had no idea what was going to happen to me in the next 24 hours. What could I offer at this point to a girl like Tiffany? By letting her go, I was protecting her. I went to bed. There was nothing else for me to do but try to sleep and find out what tomorrow was going to bring. <laughs>